Woodruffs arrived at Otter Creek as a young couple with young children. They were eager to get to know us, eager to work hard, and to help us grow in faith. They have done all of the above. I served on the search committee that was looking for a minister when uh, we had a vacancy in our pulpit and I recall that we looked at a lot of candidates and some very good candidates. Um, as we moved through that process, however, it became very clear that one candidate stood out uh, far above all others. I went to the search committee and I says, you know, this may be coincidental, but let me tell you what has happened in the past couple of weeks. I've had the same person's name proposed to me by two individuals who did not know I was on the search committee. And I just think that's real interesting. Well, coincidentally, somebody else on that search committee, I can't remember who, said, well, you know, that's interesting because the same thing has happened to me. Well, Buddy Arnold was on the committee and he said, well, that's confirmation enough. Let's find out some more about them. Let's check them out. Something happened at Otter Creek that doesn't always happen. We had a unanimous decision by the committee that Tim be recommended to the elders as our candidate to fill our vacancy as, as our pulpit minister. The very first sermon, I'll never forget that uh, it was on the Beatitudes and at the end he said, let me give you 10 ways that you can put this into practice. And that, that just blew me out of my seat. I was uh, so used to putting my mind on automatic and going through it and hearing all the don't do that and do these. And then when it came right down to where the rubber meets the road, what does it mean to really be a Christian and what can you do to show everybody else that you're a Christian? That is what Tim touched my heart with. I just appreciate how each Sunday I looked forward to coming and hearing you speak because I knew it would be something that I could relate to whether it be on money management and just challenge, challenging me to think about where do I spend my money? What, what do I do with the blessings that God has given me? Um, just every Sunday, it seems like you're speaking right to me. I've appreciated the way you've looked at the gospel and you've tried to give me food for thought. And, uh, not tell me necessarily what I wanted to hear, but what you felt like God was leading me to tell. He makes, um, scripture and and the power of Jesus and um, just very relevant things that are hard to understand he, he makes very relevant in everyday life and because of you our, our family actually sat down and we drew our own circles of fellowship and uh, decided uh, as you can see you're in the middle of my circle of fellowship um, but the kids have these all over their walls and they know who in the neighborhood they can fellowship and who they can't because of you. For a long time the girls referred to Tim as the golf ball guy from the sermon where he hit the golf ball <laughs> up into the balcony and every time I put something in the oven I'm thinking of you and the little guy with Adam's world and uh, you know it's little things like that that are funny but it also shows what an impact you've made. And you know Tim I know that that one of your main goals uh, that you strive for is to say just the right thing to really change people's lives. And one of the things that you said that changed my life tremendously uh, was when you said the words, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? <laughs> He and Julie are loving and supportive. They were a strong support to me when Bud died. I remember so well how they pulled in behind me as I drove into my driveway from the hospital. Julie had baked chocolate chip cookies for Bud just a couple of days earlier. You never forget that kind of caring. Tim, I'll always remember that the first service this building was a funeral for my Chris. You were a true leader, a friend.
according to each of us. And a favorite of Chris. Tim, another thing I appreciate so much about you is not only are you intellectual and so above me, you use so many words sometimes I don't even begin to understand, but you are so on my level and you're so compassionate, understanding, and I will never forget and, appre and always will appreciate you and Julie walking with me and my family through some times that I never thought we'd have to go through. Tim, you know, you've just been a huge support um, for us during a pretty difficult time in our life, um, losing two, two babies in a year was a struggle, um, but I felt like you gave, I'm sorry, you gave me permission um, and I needed to hear it from a spiritual leader that it's okay to have questions, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to hurt, to be sad. Um, you gave me permission to do that and I needed that at that time and um, I just appreciate your willingness to walk through a <laughs> valley of the shadow of death for us um, and just lead us into a place where we could find peace and comfort in a difficult situation. I feel privileged to have watched the Woodruffs, all five of them, grow and develop. They are a credit to their upbringing, to their extended family. We have loved them, we have ridiculed them, and they have accepted both with grace. Tim, I just want to thank you for 10 great years. Um, I've seen in you a great example of a husband and a father and the fruit of the spirit that I've seen in your family has been something that's really made an impact on me. There are two things that I want to remember you for. One is the way that, that you taught us and how we learned more about the gospel from you. And the second thing is, at my age, I have peace with my faith. Another thing about his heart is that he is a helper. He's looking to help anybody, anytime he can. And I, I remember uh, one incident about six weeks ago. I was there, I had to make some copies real fast for one of my classes. It kept asking me for some code or something like that. And, uh, and I, I was flustered because I couldn't get the machine to work. So I went over there, I saw Tim. I said, Tim, uh, you know, I need some help with this. And right away, he, he was there uh, when I needed him. No, he didn't actually know the code. He told me to go talk to Doug, and then Doug sent me to the ladies up front. But, but anyway, I couldn't have made those copies if Tim hadn't been there. And with his helpful attitude, that just got me over that, that really stressful time. We have a great debt of gratitude to you from the leadership of this congregation for being a partner with those of us who've served as elders and helping communicate and guide this congregation with the things that we have deemed important from season to season. All I can say is thank you, Lord, for sending them our way. We are the richer for it. God's blessings on you always. Way to go, Tim and Julie.